Welcome back to the Pitch Pod. My name is Joe Janner. With me, my co-host, Jeff Stebbins. Just Happy New Year. How excited are you to get into this next season of the Pitch Pod, season four? Here we are. How are you doing? Oh, well, Happy New Year to you as well, Joe. Thank you. Yeah, I'm super excited. 2024, here we are. You know, it's a new year ahead of us. Yeah, let's go. And to get into the new season to look at this now a significant number of games matches have been played in the premier league i think most are at 20 so they've all been able to play each other at least once before they flip over they're they're taking this break to play these uh fa cup match but i know some of the biggest talk and a lot of what has been mentioned around here there and everywhere is since that what's deal with manchester united and and how they've been performing and where they're at and their standings i mean what do you think about that? I think it's been a disappointing season for, you know, the Reds. I think they finished strong last season at the end. And uh, I think most of their fans were content with that. And we're satisfied overall with how Tin Hog, the manager, was doing. But I think that this season – Things aren't looking like they're going to head in that direction. Currently, they're in eighth place, and they're just not competing. And and they're losing against teams that there's no way they should lose against. And with the amount of talent that they have, resources, you got to wonder, you know, what what's going through Tin Hogg's mind? What's going What's going on in the locker room? What's going on? at the pitch, at practice, you know, what's the mentality of the team and, and how can Ten Hag go about fixing that? Th those are some questions that should come to mind. I think some people have questioned, you know, is he going to stay on for the end of the season or for next season? I don't know any of that, but I, I definitely think that they are having some issues. And if those don't get resolved by the end of the season, um, that they probably will be looking for a new manager next year. And do you wonder if that memo or that idea has already been communicated to him that he does have that much time as opposed to, you know, any other circumstance, any other club? I mean, we've seen managers already being sacked. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's a good question. But I know that the media coverage has been pretty critical and, I'm sure he's aware that the pressure's on him, the spotlight's on him right now. So, um, yeah, that's – I'm sure it's running through the back of his mind, but the question is how is he going to deal with it? How is the team going to respond? And and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how how they do in the season because, you know, they did finish strong last year to make up for a slow start of the season. And maybe that will be the case, but – at this point, it's not looking like it's headed in that trajectory. And other, I mean, is it, again, how aggressive should they be in this transfer window to bring in another player? Is that is that it? Is it the players? I mean, is that maybe the conversation around it? Is it the players? Is it the manager? Is it the club? Is it the whole? Well, I was going to, you know, I I don't know. I think only the, the individuals of that organization know for sure. But, you know, I... I think you have to be aggressive with, with the transfers for sure. But I was kind of interested in getting your take and what you think is going on and what you think is the problems that they're having at Man U. I think maybe what I alluded to earlier in that if Ten Hag has been given the message of the memo by somebody at what level, I don't know that he's okay with having his job until the end of the season you kind of wonder how that affects his decision making and how he goes about what he's doing. And if even subconsciously in preparation for a game that as you suggested in training, is he really bringing his best game? If you will, if he knows no matter what, he still has a job. Okay. So maybe it goes back to that whole motivation mentality issue of the organization. I think that's it. Yeah. I think, I mean, this organization, any organization, the motivation that is put on management to perform it goes a long way. 
So we'll have to stay tuned for that and, and see how that plays out. But definitely good thing that we mentioned it because it's it's been the talk of the town. And, yeah, they've had some big losses lately. So hopefully for the Reds fans, they, you know, they they resolve whatever's going on. But we'll be we, we'll be watching for the remainder of the season as they um, try to straighten their uh, their path and get back on um, man use expectations levels by their fans. And before they have that opportunity, there are fixtures being played. The FA Cup, round three. Already a couple of exciting results in the sense that we have seen Premier League teams in this draw playing other Premier League teams. But I think the fixture between two Premier League teams that everybody has to talk about, we have to mention, is Arsenal versus Liverpool. And that is our pitch pod match of the week that we will preview and have a prediction for you. Jeff, did you want to get started on some thoughts about how you see this going? Well, I think it's going to be a great game. Let me start with that. I think it's going to be a terrific match. Some things to consider, you know, is it is a home match for Arsenal. Arsenal, I think they have a few less players injured and, in Liverpool, as you said earlier in the pre-show, Joe, they're going to be missing some some standouts. Dominique and Salah, for sure, they'll be missed. I think this game's going to be really interesting because, you know, under different circumstances, I might change my prediction pretty drastically. But... Right now, I, I have a pretty good feeling of who I think is going to win this game, and I'll, I'll save that for later. But I, I do think it's going to be a good contest. It's at Arsenal, classic rivalry between two great clubs. So it's going to make for a good game and good for viewership, um, for sure. We know that. Aside from personnel, how about the idea of where these two clubs are in terms of the league and what they've been doing in recent form? I think you could easily say that Liverpool – has been tops in terms of getting the results and performing well, whereas an Arsenal side has not yet. I think for most of us, we look at it and go, well, this is a different competition. This is knockout tournament soccer that is taking place as the FA Cup round three, right? Is that something to consider? Are you looking at the recent form as a squad within the other competitions? I think that is something to consider. Liverpool is on top of the table for a reason. You're right. They're the number one team. But I go back to just a couple of weeks ago when the two teams clashed at Anfield. And to be honest, I thought that Arsenal was the better team that day. They ended up drawing 1-1. Right. But I'm also factoring that in because, that yes, it was two weeks ago, but it's really not that long ago either in the soccer world. So. Yeah, you know, I, I I think it is something to consider. It is a good point, but I'm not overly concerned with that. And I also look at, okay, who are they racking up these wins and, and goal differentials against in these recent matches? Uh, Competition-wise, are the teams at the top of the table or at the bottom? So there's a whole bunch of factors. But to answer your question, no, I'm not overly discouraged with how Arsenal has been doing as of late. I think one of the, uh, you know, it's worth mentioning when we talk about personnel, it's going to be interesting to see if Arteta goes with Ramsdale as the goalkeeper for this cup competition. I know there was at some point, I can't remember the match, the fixture where he got inserted in, obviously I've been playing a lot, struggled. Be interesting to see if he then though has already determined his role to be that as the cup player. And we'll see a start from Ramsdale. That's something I'll be looking for. I think that's probably the direction. I don't know, but that'd be interesting to see how they go and how he performs in this match. I think they could, could it be a key consideration of how they do yeah and i suppose that that would be a a good problem to have to have a keeper like ramsdale as your backup that you can choose to start right that's that's not bad so uh, that kind of shows you the talent level that arsenal has to to work with i think it's it now though could it continue to help or cause more problems and then that's his role then i think at one point he wanted arteta look to make this a competition maybe not get, making a bad problem giving himself a problem by having these two top goalkeepers and setting up some sense of it was competition kind of going with Rhea, but then ramsdale who is it and then now though i think the cards are on the table as far as where 
they fit within the, the one and the number two as, as far, in terms of goalkeepers for this club. Well, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I have an idea. I, again, did I call it the FA Cup or did I call it the Arsenal Cup? Again, Arsenal winning it 14 times is, again, they're going to be in it to win it, to get the silverware. I mean, they're competitive. I think that they have, like you said, the ability against Liverpool to do well. And I think scoring a couple goals, it's just so hard to think that Liverpool don't. So I have them winning, Arsenal winning this 2-1. Jeff, what's your prediction? Okay. You're going with the Arsenal too. You know, um, I think some – before I give you my prediction, I think some things to to be on the lookout for are Liverpool from the corner hitting either Van Dijk or Darwin, especially second half. I, I think that's something that Arsenal has to be prepared and ready to defend against. And I think for Arsenal, the game plan has to be more than – possess, get the ball to Saka. I think that they need to support him better up top and have those one-two combinations, those through balls. So I, I'm hoping that they do that. Now I would say the same thing for Salah, if he would be there for Liverpool, is both teams hopefully will show support and help those two individuals better as opposed to leaving them up to the top right by themselves, trying to work magic. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that those changes have been made since their last matchup because that was pretty noticeable. But um, I I agree, Joe. I think this is the Arsenal Cup, and I think that Arsenal is going to win this by a small differential. I think that they're going to win one nil on this. So we're pretty aligned with this, Joe. I think so. I mean, great opportunity. Here we are, beginning of season four, to get the table out there to see where Jeff's picks versus Joe's picks. We made it a competition, and so we're looking forward to see how we do. I mean, it's part of what the Pitch Pod is about, looking regularly to make our match of the week predictions. So I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to this. This is going to be a great match. I hope everybody else is able to get into it as well. Yeah, absolutely. It should be a fun one. Hopefully everyone gets a chance to tune in. And until next time. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you like what we bring you here at the Pitch Pod, please do us a favor. Hit that like and that subscribe. Don't forget, we're available on Apple Podcasts as well as Spotify. Thank you, everyone, and keep pitching out there. In a game, the round ball, round posts, anything can happen.